Unlocking Inner Potential Introduction For the benefit of the company, as well as personal career, this is crucial. The first step in unlocking our inner potential is self-awareness. We need to know what we are good at and where our strengths and weaknesses lie. The second step is self-acceptance. Self-acceptance is the recognition of or a way of thinking about the self. While self-awareness is how an individual perceives themselves, self-acceptance is how an individual relates to these self-perceptions. Individuals and groups who are high in self-acceptance have also been found to be creative and to experience freedom. They also participate in career planning, increase professionalism, and overcome the barriers to change. Unleashing your inner potential is not just about positive thinking, manifesting your dream life, and residing in serene bliss. That would be naive and would not bring us, at least, to awakening to our fullest potential. Of course, some theoretical knowledge is important, but it is only in action that miracles can happen. By unlocking our potential, we can discover ourselves, uncover our strengths, use them, and grow as a person. We need to make an active choice to anticipate what can be expected of us, and this can stimulate us to take initiatives and take action. It also enhances creativity and innovation, enhancing bright exceptions instead of the average middle field. Chapter 1. Understanding Inner Potential Before delving into an extensive and comprehensive exploration that thoroughly explores the multifaceted concept of potential, it is absolutely imperative to take a significant step back and meticulously delve into the alluring, captivating, and thought-provoking realm of its polar opposite. This polar opposite manifests as the complete and utter absence of potential, an enthralling notion that revolves around subjects devoid of any semblance of measurement and, quite intriguingly, are often described as lifeless or non-sentient. These particular objects possess an inherent incapability to accomplish any objective or task, boldly signifying their complete lack of potential and their resolute inability to showcase any form of prowess or excellence. As we embark upon an exhilarating and enlightening journey to deeply explore the dynamic and ever-evolving nature of potential, particularly within the fascinating context of human potential, a myriad of captivating and chameleon-like attributes unravels before our very eyes. It is within this awe-inspiring process that individuals with utmost determination and tenacity wholeheartedly and indefatigably embark upon the timeless odyssey of personal growth, knowledge acquisition, and self-improvement. By doing so, they effectively enhance and magnificently transform their inherent capacities and abilities, which in turn bestows upon them the magnificent power and remarkable skills to triumph over adversities, conquer seemingly insurmountable challenges, and ultimately accomplish feats that were once considered unimaginable or even impossible. Conversely, the unfortunate failure to effectively overcome obstacles, hurdles, or setbacks ultimately hampers and impedes the development and cultivation of essential skills, inevitably stifling and constraining one's inner potential from reaching its awe-inspiring, boundless zenith. These profound intricacies, interwoven with the depths of human existence and the pursuit of self-actualization, provocatively compel and urge us to embark upon profound moments of introspection, pondering an awe-inspiring and transcendental query that resonates deeply within our souls. How many among us, in the vast tapestry of humanity, are genuinely and wholeheartedly living up to our full potential? It is indeed a disheartening and somber revelation that, more often than not, the resounding answer echoes throughout the corridors of society, revealing that only a meager and scarce few individuals are truly and authentically fulfilling their inner potential, thereby unlocking the limitless bounds of their capabilities and aptitudes. Evidently, with a resolute and unwavering conviction, I deeply and fervently hold an unyielding belief in the profound wisdom so beautifully articulated and expounded upon by the esteemed philosopher, Buddha, who, in a moment of timeless clarity, sagaciously stated, the mind is everything. What do you think you become? These sagacious words, adorned with shimmering pearls of truth, undeniably serve as an awe-inspiring and profound clarion call 
reminding us of the immense power and sheer magnitude that lies within the deepest recesses of our minds and how our thoughts, beliefs, and perceptions significantly shape and mold the very fabric, essence, and reality of our existence. Moreover, fervently and passionately inspired by such transcendent wisdom, I feel an insatiable thirst and burning desire to embark upon an enthralling expedition and delve even deeper into a meticulously constructed and intricate theory of my own creation. This enthralling theory seeks to illuminate, with unparalleled clarity, the often intricate and enigmatic nuances that beset the understanding and harnessing of our inner potential, that resolutely profound and awe-striking facet of human existence. This theory, born from the depths of introspection and pondering, unflinchingly attempts to shed light upon why acknowledging, embracing, and addressing our inner potential exquisitely holds the perennial key, acting as the resplendent catalyst that unlocks vast oceans of unbounded human contentment, illuminating and guiding us towards embarking upon a path of extraordinary accomplishment and unparalleled triumph. Meticulously and meticulously, it accentuates and underscores the urgent, compelling need to bravely venture into the profound, mystifying, and limitless depths of our own potential. For it is precisely within these undiscovered depths that true and unadulterated fulfillment eagerly, yet patiently, awaits, ready to be wholeheartedly unleashed and magnificently experienced in all its resplendent glory, a testament to the wondrous and awe-inspiring capabilities that reside within the very core of our being. Chapter 2. Discovering Your Inner Potential We have the power to nurture this seed of equivalent benefit and produce for ourselves the results in life that we have been seeking. We must never lose faith in our inner potential to do so. Remember that we always eternally advance because force negativum always follows force positivum ad infinitum continuously propelling us forward into new realms of growth and achievement. When you discover your inner potential, do not form dangerous liaisons by being provoked by accessories. Instead, focus on cultivating a deep connection with your inner self and trust in the boundless possibilities that lie within you. Never get carried away by adulation of your inner potential, for true greatness lies not in the praise of others, but in the steadfast belief in oneself. Dealing with psychophants about your potentials can derail the mind of focus and hinder true progress. Inner potential is not about untutored reaction to a situation, but sustained purpose through proper planning with workaround solutions. It is about harnessing your unique abilities and channeling them towards the realization of your goals and dreams. Start where you are with what you have. This is the foundation of growth and transformation. Make something of it and never be satisfied, for true fulfillment comes from constantly pushing beyond your limits and striving for continuous improvement. What you make of it is never where it ends. It is merely a stepping stone towards even greater achievements. Never lose faith in your inner potential. Never accept negative results without arranging for something positive to balance the force of setback or defeat. Negative results must always bow to the magnetic influence of inner positive potential, as it has the power to turn failures into opportunities and setbacks into stepping stones towards success. The beauty in unleashing inner potential has been likened to Napoleon Hill's seed of equivalent benefit. Sometimes when we lose our way in life's garden and wonder where we can turn for the next right path, we may discover that one of the flowers we trample may possess the seed of equivalent benefit. That is, one tiny seed, dropped there by mistake, can blossom into a sudden realization of a great good that may be attained. Embrace the unexpected and remain open to the hidden opportunities that lie within every challenge. Formally, the past experiences factor is related to understanding and learning, which are significantly valued as the basis for preparing future actions. In economic theory, the past context matter, either among lived or shared past experiences, as the basis for forming decisions and linking them to the future with the intention to be relatively efficient. Specifically, past experiences are significantly accounted for in future predictions for survival tactics, especially when the future is possibly interpreted as a random walk pattern 
which has neither internal increase nor actor skill differentiation. On the other hand, when the future as the random walk pattern comes from the actor skill differentiating factor or even frequent factor proportion situation, the importance of the inner potential factor is really evident for a decision maker. The purpose of reflecting on past experiences is to distinguish the choice and differentiation between the use of inner potential objectives and the use of accumulated and similar past experiences. The existence of significant and similar past experiences in the present era affects the choice of using progressively accumulated and similar past experiences compared to the use of inner potential factors in the future. This factor is clearly shown by individuals who have abundant experience that has been achieved through hard work and a decent reputation. They suffer from industrial economic depression traumatically compared to individuals who utilize identified inner potential factors as the prosperous actors. The acceptance and choice to start a new job or career may seem difficult as it requires stepping out of one's comfort zone and embracing the unknown. However, even though the selection of inner potential factors is believed to be a credible way to regain fortune over time, despite the effort put into hard work, it should force fast results and push it upward continuously, relatively more than those utilized. Your passion and your strengths determine one of the necessary criteria of opportunities. True opportunities in life come as a function of your unique strengths, for it is through leveraging these strengths that you can unlock your fullest potential. Opportunities exist because of the following necessity. A brilliant idea depends on excellent technical strengths and passion. A highly remote project depends on one suitable typical environment. Sales prospects depend on exciting endeavor and winning zeal. Simplify your life. What do you like to do? What do you feel passionate about? What can you do well that you would feel good about whether or not you are paid for doing it? If you get a clear picture of what you would do if you had enough time, money, mojo, and certainty in the universe, what would it be? You may possibly want to answer each question above as if it is your last day. Will you be tic-tac-toeing, writing, gaming, coaching, playing an instrument, drawing? While you're still on it, can you think a little more story and background? How much effort is involved? With the multiple examples, you may eventually realize one tiny command you have in common, pattern, to help draft your plans, positioning you rightly, at no veto or a wise. The possibilities are endless, and it is up to you to explore and embrace them. To add detail on how potential development process can be made, what follows is an insightful assessment of your strengths and an insight analysis on your passions and opportunities are what you need. What you can do well as a naturally endowed person is called a metrizable basis for success. You'll always find it easier to make decisions and work based on your strengths. We can also think of strengths as internal commands. As far as you have choices in this world, only on what to do, engaging in what you can manage efficiently, minimizing effort above 5x satisfaction without external influence can be what maintains your delight and contentment parallel to save personal output and reputation. The stated implications of tithing the quality strengths to salary, irrespective of your profession, might also help set the right standards. The very long way towards unlocking your inner potential is to shake your internal thinking, courageously respond to your peculiar passions with results, recognize the alignment of your unique strengths with opportunities, and then make choices in line with your future desires. You don't need a decently paid job, you need a decent title. You don't need to work for company X. You need identity and recognition, my point. Heightened sensitivity and self-awareness help you to become more adept at recognizing the right opportunities that can stretch and enrich your capabilities. Understand the concept of life, morph, or ability evolution as a metrizable function of your strengths. The latter forms the basis for potential development process. Analyze your desires and realize that what you and everyone else long for force is delight, reward, fear, risk, discomfort, sacrifice. You gain delight by acquiring or seeing others acquiring something, financial success, promotion, recognition, etc. 
you fear the efforts involved in acquiring that something and the uncertainties of whether or not you're equipped to actually make the acquisition. Identifying what you are good at or what you can achieve is also part of the process of commercializing your ideas and achieving your aspirations. You are what you are good at, and by identifying and leveraging your strengths, you can create a solid foundation for success. This part of this paper explains how you can identify your strengths and discover what you can do naturally well. It wraps up with a discussion on how to identify opportunities, how to select among many chances, especially when you're in a decision-making mode, emotionally. The following are the highlights of this section. Identifying your strengths, identifying your passions, finding opportunities, and making choices. Remember, the journey of unlocking your inner potential is a lifelong process, but with self-awareness, perseverance, and a clear vision of your desired future, you can steadily walk the path towards realizing your true potential. Chapter 3. Setting Goals for Personal Growth The opportunities around us are so numerous we often don't recognize them. After you have read this next sentence, we will seldom get in life what we want, and that is a simple truth learned in the reality of daily living. Most often we get very close to our true desires of heart, but fall short by the smallest of margins. By understanding this, we can then clearly see that every resource is at our fingertips, just outside of our grasp. Now with a clearer sense of persistence and justification, we can then commit to the great dreams and desires we now establish. The very moment personal growth comes to mind, we are actually directing our journey towards fulfillment and taking the first step in ultimately reaching our truest desires of the heart. Once again, with needed persistence, our heart's journey is soon well underway. Lofty goals spawn lofty desires, which if just out of reach, then invite the greatest effort and thus the greatest triumph. Take a deep breath. You are here on this earth for a reason. You live in the most exciting time in human history. Something miraculous and amazing knows you by name and talks to you every day. You were created for abundance and are entitled to overcome adversity, build relationships, and know joy. Every resource you could possibly need for total fulfillment is contained right inside your mind. The heart expresses emotions, the soul processes experiences and knowledge, and the mind decides what to do with them. Where you are today, no matter how dismal, is more than just a mere life sentence. It is an opportunity for growth and transformation. Understand that nothing is permanent and change is a constant companion. All things can and will change when you use the incredible power within yourself to create the life you truly desire. When it comes to setting a vision for your life, we must consider several factors. First, imagine what you really want. Your vision must be big and expansive, reaching far beyond your current circumstances. When you are dead and gone and people are talking about you, what would you like them to remember? If you could have anything in your life, what would it be? Imagine a future where anything would be possible. What would you love to do? Allow your imagination to run wild and think in depth about some of these questions to gain clarity on what you truly desire deep inside. The big billion dollar question next is why do you want them? What is the underlying reason behind your desires? If you take a closer look at the top 20 to 30 things in your life, you will realize that they are all actually aspirations or tools to achieve these highest level visions. Use your goals as stepping stones to your highest ideals. Take into account the bigger picture and align your vision with your long-term goals and values. Have you ever met someone and you instantly knew they were going to be special or the next big thing? What's interesting is when you ask them, they just knew it. Their heart told them. Have you discovered what your heart is telling you? A vision is not just a fleeting thought, but a significant image or an impression of a future state. Put simply, it is the ideas you have about how to shape your future and create the life of your dreams. We are all living with a series of if-only statements. We say things like, if only this would happen, then I would have a better life. Right or wrong, if you have that if only thought in your life, look at what the difference is. Don't worry if the dream seems impossible or out of reach. The visionary believes in what their heart tells them. Trust in your instincts and align your vision with your desires and goals. 
This alignment will create the inner will and strength needed to turn even the most implausible visions into reality. If you believe it, you can achieve it. Short-term goals. The final phase of the development process concentrates upon the setting of short-term objectives, building directly upon the baselines established from the previous phases. The final phase begins immediately and is focused upon setting specific targets and goals unique to the individual or group involved, designed to directly support the development process. The short-term objectives will lead directly toward the achievement of the longer-term objectives identified in Phase 2, with source data and mental approach techniques used in Phase 3 both adapted and developed from these to meet the direct or indirect needs of Phase 4. Long-term goals. This phase involves the setting of long-term aims, both in terms of the ultimate external or physical objectives, but also beyond these to the personal changes in habit, techniques evolved, and characteristics developed. The aim of this phase is to develop goal-setting skills and self-motivation, build self-confidence, and create defining habits and focus points. It is crucial to have both long-term and short-term objectives in order to achieve sustainable success, begin with a clear view of the ultimate goal for each of the group or individual mentees. Once this has been decided, look at the training period and divide the process into smaller, more manageable sections. Positively chunk the process down, setting many goals for each training session, week, and month. This process will help mentees in both the way in which current abilities are addressed and also to establish clearer action steps toward their end objectives. With a well-defined roadmap in place, success becomes not only achievable but inevitable. Rise above any obstacles and keep working towards your goals, for they are the blueprint of your future accomplishments. Trust in the process and stay committed to your journey. The possibilities are endless when you dare to dream big and take consistent action. Remember, as you expand your horizons and embrace the vast possibilities that lie before you, you are inviting greater abundance, joy, and personal fulfillment into your life. Open your heart and mind to the limitless potential that resides within you. Believe in your dreams and align your actions with your true desires. With determination and perseverance, you have the power to shape your destiny and create a life beyond your wildest imagination. Embrace the journey, for it is through the challenges and triumphs that you will discover your true potential. Chapter 4. Overcoming Limiting Beliefs From a systemic view, limiting beliefs also show up when we are around environments or people who shape the way that we feel through their view of the world, their habits, or just the energy levels that they keep in their environment. When we hold these limiting beliefs, many a time they quickly become an excuse or escape for how we act or react to the things we do externally or internally. They also stop us from taking calculated risks as our self-limiting beliefs do not allow us to imagine or see the world in any other way than we have before. We tend to ignore or avoid anything that doesn't support our viewed reality and quickly latch on to things that do, even if such things are negative. Long-term readers of this column know one of my favorite sayings when it comes to self-limiting belief, think of walls and they will appear. As we first set out to work on or improve any aspect of our lives or ourselves, we quickly come face to face with our own internal limiting beliefs or paradigms. These are those beliefs that we hold about the world, ourselves, or how things are or are not supposed to be. Studies show that these are often established and powered by the things that we see or hear around us, and usually within the first seven years of life. After that time, they will continue to define who we are going forward and actually get stronger with time if we do not work on them in some way. Some of these labels or beliefs, when repeated often enough, or believed by someone who is significant to you, over time, gel to form identities that become how we see reality and this then shapes the actions and habits that we take on going forward. It is also important to note that out of the 65,000 plus thoughts we are likely to have on a typical day in a human brain, over 45,000 of them are on average negative for most people today. Recognizing these distorted thoughts and challenging them is the basis of cognitive behavioral therapy. 
Uncontrollable worries, negative self-thoughts, or change avoidance are manipulating us without our control. It is crucial to have the knowledge to distinguish the origin of worries, depression, or anxiety. If our brain is properly prepared with the right defense, we can break our limits. That is our responsibility. To question the thoughts that don't align with reality, to search for information, and to understand our mind. Let's fight the predisposed thoughts, the ones which we accepted unintentionally. The simple acceptance of the negative monologue is over. Our protection mechanism generates a self-defense barrier that tries to maintain our self-image. The questioning process leads us to deep introspection. Thus, to escape the cycle of limitation, we must carefully inspect the negative thoughts, search for reality, and put it into perspective. How would you feel about your life if you believe that you are a bottomless pit full of internal resources to grow yourself? We are born with an enormous amount of potential, yet most of us will limit ourselves by not trying new things, by dismissing interesting opportunities, by avoiding exposure to embarrassment or failure. But why do we do this? It is surely not a conscious decision to waste our life, yet there is something that pulls at our sleeves, preventing us from becoming a free-flowing fountain of action that we would be proud of. The problem lies in the negative thoughts. They lead to negative emotions by blocking the very nature of our brain, which always looks for patterns, recognizes familiar sights, sounds, and smells. If we recognize a negative thought, we will end up feeling inadequate. We prefer to put barriers, prejudging our approaches to different areas in life, even without failing or without challenging those thoughts. This is what Carol Dweck calls a fixed mindset, where you believe basic qualities like intelligence or talent are fixed traits. Those in a fixed mindset convolute reality in order to preserve their self-image, either forego their chances to learn and grow in order to protect themselves. In 1988, psychologist Carol S. Dweck introduced the concept of the mindset and the role it plays in helping people to find success in life. A mindset, according to Dweck, is a self-perception or self-theory that people hold about themselves. They believe that those perceptions are based on the qualities that they attribute to themselves. Based on extensive research, Dweck proposed that there are two types of mindsets, the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. According to Dweck, those with the growth mindset believe that their abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. This will help to allow them to expand beyond their initial comfort zones. This group seeks challenges as an opportunity to grow. There are many different advanced technologies available for leaders to use to improve the performance of organizations under their lead. Leadership for the modern world will enable you to tap into techniques that will increase motivation, accountability, and performance of a large number of workers at the same time. This said, there is still no single more powerful technique for enabling success than having a growth mindset. With a growth mindset, people believe, or have the potential to believe, that they can improve their abilities. With a growth mindset, you are not as focused on looking good, you are focused on getting better. An individual who can approach the world in this way is more likely to learn. Those who learn grow. In my opinion, once this mindset is employed, it can be used to help advancement in other areas, including techniques from leadership for the modern world. The growth mindset has the ability to open up new possibilities and drive individuals to reach their full potential. By embracing the philosophy of continuous improvement and actively seeking challenges, we can break free from the chains of self-imposed limitations. Instead of being confined by a fixed mindset, we can embark on a journey of growth and transformation. It is through nurturing a growth mindset that we unlock our true potential and pave the path towards personal and professional success. So let us embrace the power of the growth mindset and embark on this transformative journey together, for it is only through growth that we can truly thrive and flourish. Chapter 5. Developing Self-Confidence Make a conscious effort to develop yourself so that you earn the confidence that you truly deserve. Having a positive impact on your organization can be achieved by nurturing and cultivating your self-confidence. It is of utmost importance to fully grasp the fact that by nurturing and fostering your inner confidence, 
you will ignite a spark of inspiration within those who surround you. Equally significant is the notion of considering the development of self-confidence as a means to unlock the dormant potential that lies within those around you. By doing so, not only will you become an exceptional team player, but you will also create a harmonious environment for growth and collaboration. It is imperative that you put your confidence into practice by forging alliances, networking with like-minded individuals in various groups, and using your confidence to build a positive and influential image for yourself and your community. The dictionary definition of self-confidence portrays it as a profound feeling of trust in one's abilities, qualities, and judgment. The essence of confidence can be witnessed in numerous areas of life and within the realms of any organization. It is a remarkable quality that commands respect from others while unlocking the potential that resides deep within our souls. Confidence can be fostered and nurtured in various ways. For instance, by dedicating our attention and focus to our accomplishments and refraining from being overly critical of ourselves, we create a fertile ground for self-confidence to flourish. Setting short-term goals that are within reach and surpassing them acts as a catalyst to amplify our self-confidence. Additionally, embracing calculated risks that stretch our capabilities and push us beyond our comfort zones plays an integral role in developing our overall confidence. The concept of self-image becomes paramount to individuals who seek to lead fulfilling and tranquil lives. This self-image is deeply intertwined with the cosmic energy, or in simpler terms, the connection that each individual establishes with the higher power. Allow me to elucidate on the notion of self-image. Self-image is the holistic mental representation or perception an individual holds about themselves. A positive self-image is built upon the foundation of love, respect, honor, integrity, and the pursuit of self-realization. Every action we undertake and every thought that traverses our minds first takes shape within our inner realm, which is then translated into external actions. Our self-image serves as the key that unlocks our thoughts, shapes our actions, and determines the shape of our future. Every genuine feeling we experience becomes evident not only to ourselves, but also to others through the manifestation of our self-image. In the pursuit of assisting individuals in overcoming their innate fears and cultivating a positive self-image, mental fortitude, willpower, and inner serenity, I shall endeavor to organize transformative wellness for all programs. These programs will serve as a beacon of hope, guiding individuals towards the path of personal growth and self-realization. By integrating principles of psycho-spirituality and scientific prayer methods, my aim is to bring about a substantial improvement in the academic performance, character development, moral values, discipline, and altruistic acts of service within the community. Therefore, what the new generation needs is a strong, unwavering faith in cosmic energy, scientific prayer methods, spiritual psychology, and the transformative power of psycho-spirituality. Considering the fundamental principle that failure is synonymous with learning, our objective should be to identify areas right with potential for growth and expansion when faced with adversity or chaos. Politicians and educators who operate under the illusion that failure can be eradicated are simply misguided. As previously mentioned, the line that distinguishes success from failure is often blurry and ill-defined. Furthermore, life would lack excitement and depth without the opportunity to stumble and fall. Thus, it is far more constructive, not to mention attainable, to focus on teaching individuals how to graciously navigate failure when encountered. Doing so alleviates feelings of helplessness and imbues individuals with the strength to weather life's challenges. By harnessing failure as a tool for personal development, both educators and parents can effectively provide aspirants with the necessary frameworks to maintain high morale and cultivate overall mental well-being. Failure, therefore, should not be avoided but rather pursued, on the condition that one's spirit remains fortified as it possesses the potential to illuminate pathways towards personal growth and development. Failure is an inevitable outcome that accompanies us on our journey through life. While it is often perceived as undesirable, 
failure should not be feared. Its inevitability necessitates a shift in focus towards extracting valuable lessons from these moments of defeat, thereby increasing our chances of navigating through the unpredictable terrain that life presents us with. Success and failure, when venturing into uncharted territories, are separated by a thin and often inconspicuous line. However, discerning and demarcating failure from success can enable us to seize the inherent value concealed within moments of failure. By analyzing what went wrong, we gain insights into the areas and skills that require refinement and growth. This, in turn, opens up pathways through which we can acquire more knowledge and embrace positive experiences. When approached with grace and a constructive mindset, failure becomes a potent catalyst for change and creativity. An individual who continually strives to overcome obstacles and triumph over setbacks in their pursuit of personal growth will unearth abundant opportunities for acquiring newfound knowledge and honing their skills. Chapter 5. Developing Self-Confidence Make a conscious effort to develop yourself so that you earn the confidence that you truly deserve. Having a positive impact on your organization can be achieved by nurturing and cultivating your self-confidence. It is of utmost importance to fully grasp the fact that by nurturing and fostering your inner confidence, you will ignite a spark of inspiration within those who surround you. Equally significant is the notion of considering the development of self-confidence as a means to unlock the dormant potential that lies within those around you. By doing so, not only will you become an exceptional team player, but you will also create a harmonious environment for growth and collaboration. It is imperative that you put your confidence into practice by forging alliances, networking with like-minded individuals in various groups, and using your confidence to build a positive and influential image for yourself and your community. The dictionary definition of self-confidence portrays it as a profound feeling of trust in one's abilities, qualities, and judgment. The essence of confidence can be witnessed in numerous areas of life and within the realms of any organization. It is a remarkable quality that commands respect from others while unlocking the potential that resides deep within our souls. Confidence can be fostered and nurtured in various ways. For instance, by dedicating our attention and focus to our accomplishments and refraining from being overly critical of ourselves, we create a fertile ground for self-confidence to flourish. Setting short-term goals that are within reach and surpassing them acts as a catalyst to amplify our self-confidence. Additionally, embracing calculated risks that stretch our capabilities and push us beyond our comfort zones plays an integral role in developing our overall confidence. The concept of self-image becomes paramount to individuals who seek to lead fulfilling and tranquil lives. This self-image is deeply intertwined with the cosmic energy or, in simpler terms, the connection that each individual establishes with the higher power. Allow me to elucidate on the notion of self-image. Self-image is the holistic mental representation or perception an individual holds about themselves. A positive self-image is built upon the foundation of love, respect, honor, integrity, and the pursuit of self-realization. Every action we undertake and every thought that traverses our minds first takes shape within our inner realm, which is then translated into external actions. Our self-image serves as the key that unlocks our thoughts, shapes our actions, and determines the shape of our future. Every genuine feeling we experience becomes evident not only to ourselves, but also to others through the manifestation of our self-image. In the pursuit of assisting individuals in overcoming their innate fears and cultivating a positive self-image, mental fortitude, willpower, and inner serenity, I shall endeavor to organize transformative wellness for all programs. These programs will serve as a beacon of hope, guiding individuals towards the path of personal growth and self-realization by integrating principles of psycho-spirituality and scientific prayer methods my aim is to bring about a substantial improvement in the academic performance, character development, moral values, discipline, and altruistic acts of service within the community. 
Therefore, what the new generation needs is a strong, unwavering faith in cosmic energy, scientific prayer methods, spiritual psychology, and the transformative power of psychospirituality. Considering the fundamental principle that failure is synonymous with learning, our objective should be to identify areas ripe with potential for growth and expansion when faced with adversity or chaos. Politicians and educators who operate under the illusion that failure can be eradicated are simply misguided. As previously mentioned, the line that distinguishes success from failure is often blurry and ill-defined. Furthermore, life would lack excitement and depth without the opportunity to stumble and fall. Thus, it is far more constructive, not to mention attainable, to focus on teaching individuals how to graciously navigate failure when encountered. Doing so alleviates feelings of helplessness and imbues individuals with the strength to weather life's challenges. By harnessing failure as a tool for personal development, both educators and parents can effectively provide aspirants with the necessary frameworks to maintain high morale and cultivate overall mental well-being. Failure, therefore, should not be avoided but rather pursued on the condition that one's spirit remains fortified as it possesses the potential to illuminate pathways towards personal growth and development. Failure is an inevitable outcome that accompanies us on our journey through life. While it is often perceived as undesirable, failure should not be feared. Its inevitability necessitates a shift in focus towards extracting valuable lessons from these moments of defeat, thereby increasing our chances of navigating through the unpredictable terrain that life presents us with. Success and failure, when venturing into uncharted territories, are separated by a thin and often inconspicuous line. However, discerning and demarcating failure from success can enable us to seize the inherent value concealed within moments of failure. By analyzing what went wrong, we gain insights into the areas and skills that require refinement and growth. This, in turn, opens up pathways through which we can acquire more knowledge and embrace positive experiences. When approached with grace and a constructive mindset, failure becomes a potent catalyst for change and creativity. An individual who continually strives to overcome obstacles and triumph over setbacks in their pursuit of personal growth will unearth abundant opportunities for acquiring newfound knowledge and honing their skills. Chapter 6. Cultivating Positive Habits Choosing the right behavior promised a new beginning, high productivity, and a general heightened quality of life. According to experts, it's important that we observe primed signals, good habits. Another expert said, 85% of everything we do is habitual. While Marian Austin claims that repetition is the mother of learning, the father of action, which makes it the architect of accomplishment, from these discoveries, I learned that the most certain way of not missing a day in whatever it is we are pursuing is by installing positive habits in your life, rather than relying on discipline, motivation, or inspiration. Label your time slash shift as prime time. In the definition of time from a psychological perspective, Jerry Andrus writes, Label your time, and it will become what you call it. Label your morning shift prime time, and you will wake up determined. Assert that it is your morning shift and you won't lack motivation in the morning. Neuroscience has made it clear that activity engrossed in the morning significantly affects attention functions necessary for learning in the afternoon and evening. An experiment was carried out in 2009 at the University of Arkansas where a number of students were asked to play an online memory game. The results clearly showed that students who played the game in the morning got easier and better in the game as the day went on. Since habits personalize a personality, it is important that we grow the right habits. Aristotle once said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. In the beginning, habits are like guests. They come and depending on our response, they choose whether to stay or not. If habits are good, we vote to keep them. If they are bad, we dismiss them. With time, Good habits will find a home within us. According to the Memory Prediction Framework, every time we expose ourselves to a primed influence, a new traffic junction is built in our brain. 
With time, the road leading to a priming signal becomes broader, while the other gets neglected, and the driver is forced to about on the paved road. This is how we form habits. Understanding this memory mechanism, it gives us the ability to get rid of bad habits and establish good ones instead. It's private and personal, and it needs to evolve as you evolve. So, let's first identify a few key elements of morning rituals that can be combined with your work to enhance productivity. Morning rituals can seem overwhelming if they're not ingrained as habits. However, morning rituals are like any other routines, such as taking a shower, getting dressed, having your breakfast, reading the paper, and checking your email. You do them because they make you feel good, presentable, informed, and productive. Instead of focusing on everything, zero in on a few that will deliver value for your business and you personally. Establish it and practice it until it becomes second nature. Let's examine these morning rituals that can work in conjunction with your business. Each can readily be adapted to accommodate all types of businesses or lifestyles. A morning ritual is absolutely essential in creating a successful day. It's that foundation that I mentioned earlier. It's setting the intention for the day. It's getting grounded and centered. And it's the time to practice gratitude, meditation, prayer, yoga, or whatever it is that starts your day in a strong way. This might sound a little mushy to some, a little new age, but it's crucial. You need the mindset to establish a morning routine to embrace this exercise. In view of its importance to your success, you need to ensure you utilize all available resources to establish a morning routine that will enhance your productivity. Yes, before you start waffling about the fact that one size doesn't fit all, I need to emphasize that creating a successful morning routine doesn't have to be one size fits all. We live in an age when people are so busy keeping up with their professional, social, or virtual lives that they cannot find their inner contentment or purpose of life. Mindfulness practices, primarily rooted in Eastern tradition, are associated with numerous health benefits and cognitive, emotional, and physiological effects. In the contemplative education movement, scholars and practitioners tend to claim that mindfulness practices lead to greater compassion or pro-social behavior more generally. Practice gratitude through contemplative endeavor can efficaciously flood the mind with positive emotions and increase well-being in both oneself and others. Results have shown that engaging in gratitude practices is an active coping method and positively predicts psychological well-being and negatively predicts psychological distress, while serving as a lightning rod against anxiety, depression, and other psychiatric disorders. Gratitude involves regular practice of several composite qualities from Eastern tradition, patience, forbearance, loving-kindness, thankfulness, and in Buddhist tradition, it further transforms into forgiveness of those that are ungrateful, jealous, or negative of what we have chosen to express gratitude for. The cultivation and nurturing of gratitude saws the seeds of positivity, happiness, and inner peace, allowing one to navigate through life with grace and resilience. Ultimately, it is a deeply transformative practice that can bring about profound shifts in one's mindset and perspective. By shifting our focus to what we are grateful for, we are able to cultivate a mindset of abundance and appreciation, leading to an overall sense of fulfillment and well-being in our daily lives. As we develop the habit of regularly expressing gratitude, we become more resilient, more compassionate, and more connected to ourselves and to others. The practice of gratitude becomes a guiding light, illuminating our path and reminding us of the beauty and joy that surround us. Let us embrace the power of gratitude and embark on a journey of self-discovery and personal growth. As the saying goes, gratitude turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion into clarity. It makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. May we cultivate gratitude in our hearts, and may it radiate out into the world, spreading love, kindness, and compassion to all. Chapter 7. Nurturing Relationships for Personal Growth First and foremost, let us embark on an extraordinary journey through the timeline of your existence, delving into the vast depths of your cherished memories. 
Remember those enchanting moments spent with the remarkable individuals who shaped your childhood and facilitated your personal growth. I cannot guarantee that we can recreate the exact atmosphere with its meticulously arranged furnishings and identical temperature, but we can certainly evoke the emotions that filled the room when your parents embraced and kissed you while soothing the pain of an ailment unrelated to your physical injuries. Reflect on the times when your siblings graciously shared their snacks with you within the school compound. Recall the friends who extended a helping hand during the trials and tribulations of adolescence, when your self-confidence faltered due to the relentless assault of pimples and the cruel judgment of your peers. Let nostalgia sweep over you as you recollect the neighbors who warmly greeted you, their voices resounding with genuine affection whenever you stumbled. Cherish the memory of your teachers who offered unwavering support in times of academic despair, even when your grades plummeted to unprecedented depths. And above all, honor the guardians who illuminated your path to success when countless others turned their backs on you in derision. For it is through failure and resilience that individuals truly evolve and grow. Do not fear association with those deemed unsuccessful, for success is not measured solely by wealth and accolades. Rather, it lies in the profound connection between two distinct souls coming together to complement and elevate one another. And so, with resolute determination, you have chosen to draw the curtains on the unproductive chapters of your past, embracing the prospect of a new beginning. Many of us are already grappling with the challenges of forging and sustaining genuine face-to-face -face friendships and intimate relationships in today's society. Whether we are young students navigating the labyrinthine halls of academia or simply individuals seeking a meaningful and contented existence, the conventional pathways to connection often seem fraught with obstacles. Not every person we encounter is a supportive presence in our lives. However, the innate human desire for recognition, understanding, and care remains, beckoning us to seek solace in the embrace of those who offer unwavering support. Mentoring and coaching by compassionate adults play a vital role in fostering positive identities and bolstering self-esteem. Furthermore, they provide alternatives to negative behaviors and detrimental beliefs, leaving an indelible impact on the lives of young people. The educational realm recognizes the immeasurable value of supportive figures, with K-12 organizations consistently prioritizing the improvement of personnel dedicated to building and maintaining sustained, supportive relationships. This emphasis on mentorship and coaching permeates all levels of education, from lectures to schools, and extends to educational leaders and beyond. Supportive individuals can be characterized as those who extend care, both through their words and actions. They provide us with the emotional and physical support we require during times of need, while also empowering us to reach greater heights throughout our lives. In this rapidly evolving era, the changes in our lifestyle pose a significant challenge when it comes to finding a crucial element of existence. Meaningful and fulfilling moments shared with the most significant people in our lives. While the convenience of the internet and social media remains undeniable, the advancements in technology and the proliferation of social networks have connected us more widely and simply than ever before. However, there is a growing concern regarding the quality of human relationships in this digital age. People today are more susceptible to social anxiety and depression, often exacerbated by a lack of supportive individuals in their lives. Understanding is the foundation upon which empathy is built. Empathy, in turn, is essential for effective communication, a skill that serves as the cornerstone of collaboration and innovative thinking. By enhancing our cognitive abilities and honing our collaborative and communicative skills, we pave the way for safer operations, increased productivity, and an overall improvement in human potential. This interconnectedness translates into successfully completed projects and organizations that radiate positivity and integrity, thus benefiting their host nations economically. While technological knowledge and experience provide the framework for technical mentoring, understanding, and empathy must precede them to inspire and engage both seasoned and new professionals.
Ethical judgment and consideration of the needs of colleagues are essential qualities for effective mentors to possess. In the pursuit of building stronger relationships, it is invaluable to follow the advice of seeking first to understand and then to be understood. This holds especially true for seasoned professionals in industries such as oil and gas. If you find yourself as a rig-based engineer reporting to an operator and encountering difficulties with the rig team, would you expect them to listen to and implement your suggestions if they do not understand your reasoning behind proposed solutions? Rather than adopting a rigid take-it-or-leave-it approach, it proves more beneficial to first lend an ear to their perspective. Through this collaborative process, you can incorporate their insights while leveraging your superior knowledge to identify areas for improvement in safety and operations. The outcomes of such an inclusive approach are bound to breed success. By sharing knowledge and bridging gaps in understanding, we enhance our chances of triumph in both operations and interpersonal relationships. Chapter 8. Overcoming Obstacles and Adversities Now, let us delve deeply within the depths of our hearts, tearing through the murky recesses of our spiritual being. Seek, excavate, and gushing forth mightily from the very core of our being, will explode an awe-inspiring reservoir of boundless spiritual resources divinely endowed by providence itself. These resources are here to guide us, to empower us, and to equip us with the strength and resilience needed to confront, cope with, and bear the countless burdens that come our way each day. With a gentle touch of spirituality, we have the power to effortlessly cast aside our worries, anxieties, dispiritedness, and all other forms of emptiness that lurk within our existence. It is as simple as plucking a delicate daisy from an empty field. Yet it is not merely fortitude, stamina, courage, or any other descriptive word that captures this essence. I speak of something far deeper, our personal reservoirs of indefatigable moral strength, vigor, and energy. Within us lies the unwavering power to face, combat, and overcome any challenge that dares to cross our path. These challenges may take various forms, psychological, emotional, or perhaps even physical. They may seem insurmountable, but we have the ability to transcend them. We possess an inner strength that propels us beyond obstacles and adversity into a realm that empowers and enriches our entire existence. It is a realm that transcends the usual drudgery endured by the average person. Challenges are an inevitable part of life. Some may be great, while others may appear small in comparison. However, it is not the nature of our predicament that truly matters. What truly matters is our approach to these situations, how we handle them, and how we navigate through the trials and tribulations that life presents us. Many individuals recoil and withdraw when faced with challenges, hoping for a miracle to magically resolve their difficulties. Some succumb to despair, losing hope, and seeking solace in self-pity, escapism, and self-inflicted harm. And then there are those who flee to the nearest port hastily cutting themselves down to size in order to fit into the mold of mediocrity. None of these individuals can be blamed, for their actions simply reflect the existence of untapped inner spiritual resources. Hidden within each of us are reservoirs of strength waiting to be harnessed, waiting to be used to address and overcome the trials that life throws our way. Those who study resilience have often focused on risk factors and defining the trait of resilience itself. Yet it is crucial that we widen our focus even further. We must allocate resources and develop intervention programs that nurture resilience within students. These programs must operate on multiple levels, reaching every corner of the school setting, from the individual student to the classroom, and finally, to the school as a whole. Interventions at the individual student level must cultivate a sense of capability, fostering a belief in their own resilience and persistence. At the classroom level, the focus should be on creating a positive, engaging, and enriching environment that encourages resilient thinking. Finally, at the school level, the entire structure must be transformed into one that empowers and supports every student. Some students may possess a strong resiliency quotient, while others may struggle with an extremely low one. Variability is to be expected. 
Resilience is often mistakenly seen as an inherent trait possessed by some individuals and lacking in others. When someone copes well with challenges, they are labeled as resilient, while those who falter are seen as lacking resilience. However, an alternative viewpoint allows us to see resilience as a process, a process that can be influenced and shaped by the adults in a child's life. Resilience is not merely a personal trait. It emerges from close relationships with others and the right socialization processes. Situatedness and personal agency also play vital roles in fostering resilience. A combination of characteristics and resources, such as access to secure and nurturing environments, a dependable food supply, age-appropriate language development, responsive parenting, high self-esteem, and emotional intelligence collectively contribute to resilience. Knowing you desire change in your own life through the advice shared, it is to be expected that you possess the qualities of a great individual. Your journey towards personal growth and self-improvement will not only benefit yourself, but also extend to your friends, associates, and society as a whole. By embracing positive notions and inspirations, you are likely to influence and inspire others, contributing to a brighter future. Your well-being and high spirits are integral to the buoyancy and growth of the world around you. One of the most challenging aspects of personal growth and development is the willingness to seek help and support when needed. You may have heard various sayings such as, if you do not ask, you will never know or no man is an island. Our society and environment make it nearly impossible to navigate life without relying on others for assistance. At different stages in life, we all require help, support, or guidance. Hopefully, you are aware of those individuals who can provide valuable support and lend a helping hand. Pride, refusing to seek assistance, and a lack of humility are some of the greatest obstacles to personal progress and success. Therefore, it is vital that we remain open-minded and humble, always willing to turn to others for help when hardship consumes us. This is a lesson we can learn from children. In addition to lifelong learning, it is also important to stimulate personal growth by asking ourselves thought-provoking questions. Here are nine questions to reflect upon and take positive action upon. 1. How can I continue to nurture my personal growth and development? 2. What steps can I take to overcome challenges and setbacks? 3. Am I making the most of the resources available to me? 4. How can I build strong, supportive relationships with others? 5. What habits or thought patterns do I need to let go of in order to grow? 6. How can I cultivate a mindset of positivity and resilience? 7. What actions can I take to contribute to the well-being of those around me? 8. In what ways can I broaden my perspectives and expand my knowledge? 9. How can I make a meaningful impact on the world around me? By pondering these questions and taking proactive steps towards personal growth, we can embark on a transformative journey towards a brighter and more fulfilling future. So let us embrace change, seek support when needed, and continue to strive for greatness in all aspects of our lives. Chapter 9. Sustaining Inner Potential The motivation for sustaining inner potential includes trusting this process which inherently happens as one trusts oneself. Peak experiences into the inner potential that everyone has motivates this goal, promisingly galvanizing the individual potential towards the greater good. This has proven extraordinarily powerful for those whom I have had the chance to work with. The results include numerous testimonials of increased innovation, decreased maintenance efforts, increased troubleshooting capabilities, and as a result, increased new and improved products and services. For the individual, peeking into oneself and choosing to trust oneself opens up a world of opportunities. For the system, peeking into the inner potential that everyone has motivates us to provide world-class education more uniformly and without prejudice. The potential side effects of achieving such a balance are that individuals might one day not need to directly participate in the tradition of education but their lives, their life goals, and their vitality would indicate that they are ready to participate in an educated world that continuously creates an environment of drive, innovation, collaboration, and clarity. Sustaining inner potential involves regular input from a variety of sources. 
Unlocking inner potential is neither a one-time experience, nor is it finite. Intellectual, cognitive, and other similar forms of achievement pale in comparison to the mountain one meets and must climb when the paradigm is lifted from a whole life perspective. The success metrics change, and so does the challenge. Continually going back to reinvent the paradigm until well past the age of 90, and then renewing the model every year from that point, one comes to inherently understand that the pathway to success is not reached through achieving one-time gains or through traditional education programs. The problem with education is that we start treating everyone the same and expect the same results from all. A trained workforce is very useful to serve on assembly lines, but to serve the knowledge industry, a trained workforce that knows how to think and adapt is more valuable. Invest in learning, understand and acknowledge knowledge to create longevity for success. There is no end to learning. Learning is continuous and lifelong. Open up your world to understand new things. It could be a new language, skill, process, or understanding another functioning of society. Establish the quality of improvement, and regardless of what the situation suggests, always look for self-progression. When you are continuously self-investing your capabilities, your worth shines through. You have the opportunity to convince your inner feelings and work to open the door to success. You have the power to make your work lead you through unfound opportunities for success. It's only during a risk when you can get long enough to make your path clear even when you think you are not good enough. It's a matter of when you realize you are starting to outgrow all the scenarios in an effort to be more successful. Always learn and grow in all aspects of your life. Sharpen your skills, increase your knowledge, abilities, heart, and honor. The ability to learn and grow has a lasting effect in defining your natural-born qualities and skills. Growth has many phases attached to one's life. You need to invest in developing yourself to be better in every version of yourself. Be the improved version of yourself when you wake up every day. Let every dust of the day clean its dirt on the threshold of the door and create you into another person full of mindfulness, self-respect, love, faith in yourself, courage, and pride. Learn to edit your feelings. Know when it's time to value, time to accept, and time to prioritize. Through life's ups and downs experiences, make the best of the good times and improperly enjoy them with people you love and enjoy the art of living. Gain wisdom in the bad times and come out stronger than you ever thought possible. The human mind is capable of wondrous creativity and astonishing discoveries, so keep it engaged. Small titillations that are often overlooked or taken for granted, even those frivolously indulged senses, are our inner Machiavellian methods to keep our creative juices flowing. Whether you like to cook, a certain musical instrument, a craft project, or witnessing the emotions and thoughts of others, engage it all, keep it new and refreshed. Ideas and thoughts combined with indulged senses trigger our inner genius potential, engage all on every facet. Small things add up. Small victories are symbols in our lives that we are moving forward. Combined, those small victories add up and create or reinforce habits, which move us forward or help to maintain that state of being. In reverse, those small losses that lay dormant also add up and create or reinforce habits, which move us back or maintain our current state. What good habits are you reinforcing? What good habits do you commit to start reinforcing? Keep track of ideas and thoughts that might be beneficial in your habits accomplishments, and lifestyles. Small symbols contribute to progress. Acknowledge and celebrate your accomplishments and milestones. Just like fitness is often overlooked in a strength-based world, the achievements and successes of others are often downplayed. A little internal praise now and then helps us reinforce that we too are capable and able. This recognition also promotes the awareness of the accomplishments of others as well. Keep things in balance, nothing in excess. Just enough to acknowledge our small and grand victories. Rejoice in the journey and continue striving for excellence. If you found this content enriching and valuable, we would be deeply grateful if you could express your appreciation through liking and subscribing. Your support is incredibly meaningful and enables us to continue creating content that resonates with you.
For those who think this is a great gift for yourself or for your loved ones, you can find the link in the description.